Okay, so we're still talking about constitutive modeling of materials, geomaterials. And if you remember a few classes ago, we had this picture of a yield surface for, this is for a, a more Coulomb model, okay, commonly used model. And, and by the way, sometimes you'll see these plotted, uh, I know, and I've even drawn it uh, myself, the, the opposite way. So, like this. Right, it, it doesn't really matter which way you you plot it. it that just defines the sign convention, because uh, we can we can choose positive compressive positive compressive stresses or positive tensile stresses. In typically in say metals plasticity, we we use positive tensile stresses, uh, but in in uh, geomechanics, we almost always use positive compressive stresses because that's really all there is in the earth. So in this case. Uh, the the way this is drawn is is sort of flipped from the way you'd expect it to be drawn in, in geomechanics, but that's just the way I uh, the figure was on where I took it from Wikipedia. So you can always tell uh, for a, a pressure dependent yield surface which direction is positive because it it sort of opens the yield surface gets larger in the positive direction. Okay, so in this case, um, well I'm saying. It gets larger in the direction of increasing compressive pressure, let's say that, compressive hydrostatic stress. Okay. So one thing about this model, if you remember, there's a line, sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals sigma 3, that this thing is surrounding, okay, where those are the principal stresses or the normal stresses, okay. And so what this more Coulomb surface, you know, represents or says is that as long as I apply only hydrostatic pressure, that it doesn't matter how much pressure I apply, the material will always remain elastic, right? So if I increase the hydrostatic pressure, meaning it means that I'm travel along this line, I'm heading in this direction, if I'm increasing the hydrostatic pressure, and if you remember what I said, the state of stress is either inside this surface or on it. It can never be outside of it, right? If it's, if it's on it, the, mater the material's essentially failed, uh, but if it's inside it, it's elastic. It means if I increase, I mean, what this model says is if I increase the hydrostatic pressure, no matter how high I increase it, when I let it go, it's going to go right back to where it was originally, undeformed, okay? So obviously, this is probably not physical for a rock, right? Because rocks have pores in them. And what this is saying is that no matter how hard I squeeze the rock, I'm never going to compress those pores out. Okay? This is what this model is saying. So obviously, just probably from your intuition, you realize that this is probably not true. If I squeeze a porous material really hard, eventually I'm going to cause those pores to collapse. And that, that pore collapse can be permanent. So that when I let it go, it will remain deformed in some way due to the fact that I crush those pores, okay? And so, uh, here's some data that, that basically shows that. So this is a, a, a bunch of sandstone data that was tested in, di so the, the different colored dots and triangles and squares all represent different types of sandstone, but they're all sandstones. And they're all tested at triaxial configuration. And so what you see here is a, on the bottom is a plot of the mean effective stress, okay? So this is, the mean effective stress is the average of sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, okay? The average of sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. It's the mean, eff mean effective stress, or effective mean stress, however you want to say it. 
So really along the, along the x-axis here, what we're really talking about is an increase in the hydrostatic pressure. Okay. Now, of course, if we combine that uh, with some shear, then we get failure up, up here along this axis. And that's what, oops. If we uh, combine that with some shear, we get failure, and that's, that's the sort of more envelope. But in here, we get permanent. So these data points in here are scenarios where we increase the hydrostatic pressure, and then we released it, and you had a permanent deformation. So in this case, uh, this represents a loss in porosity. And so uh, what those sort of elliptical lines, I don't know if you can read that, but it's like uh, 23, 20, 21, 15%. So this is the reduction in pore volume associated with hydrostatic confinement. So we increased the pressure, then we let the rock go, and it remained somewhat deformed. Okay? And you'll notice that the data roughly falls on, I mean, these, these ellipses are drawn just to show the, I mean, these, these uh, lines that I drew in red, sort of tracing over the dotted lines, are just drawn there to show the trend. But you'll notice they sort of trend in a way that looks like a circle or an ellipse. Okay? So these type of a model that would represent this would be called an end cap model. Okay? And what there's the equation that represents the end cap should, you know, likely will have some sort of elliptical form. And uh, 